Hello friends, wizards, witches, and muggles. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. So today's video is a story time video. I have never done a story time ever on my channel. So this is new and exciting. I'm gonna be talking about my experience that I had this month of meeting and working with Warwick Davis. He plays Professor Flitwick in the Harry Potter films, head of Ravenclaw House, and he also played Grip Hook, and I got the chance to meet and work with him. I still don't know how this happened, I don't know why it happened, but it did, and I'm gonna tell you all about it. I'm also gonna be telling you about all of the brand new Goblet of Fire features that are currently at the Water Weather Studio Tour in London, because I also was very lucky, and I got to see all of those new things which I'd never seen before. They were very exciting, and I know not everybody can make it to the tour to have a look at these things so I went for you guys and I took you guys with me so if you're interested in my story with Warwick Davis and seeing new things in the studio tour keep on watching and if you're brand new to my channel hello welcome don't forget you can click the subscribe button if you'd like to become part of a weird magical online family but let's go because I have got a lot to talk about <laughs> Okay, I have no idea where to start. Okay, I'm gonna start from the very, very beginning, which started with an email. It was an invitation from the studio tour asking if I would like to join them for an evening which would consist of a Harry Potter quiz night in the Great Hall. Now, obviously I'd heard about these quizzes. I was like, this sounds amazing. Of course I would love to come. So sign me up with my plus one, IRSVP'd. And an email followed saying, We'd also like you to do a broadcast with Warwick Davis. Is this something that you would like to do with us? And I was just like, what? And of course, I initially thought the broadcast was going to be, oh, it must be everyone else that's going to this event as well. We must be the audience and Warwick Davis is like hosting it or something. No, no, no. I was wrong. This was a proposal for just me and Warwick Davis to do a live broadcast on the internet and I started freaking out. Obviously this is an incredibly exciting opportunity to have been given. Why me? I don't deserve this kind of thing. Either way, I started to freak out a little bit because if you know me, I'm a very anxious person when it comes to live speaking, broadcasts, anything live that I can't really prepare for very well, I kind of just say no, because it's not worth the anxiety for me personally. But for this opportunity, I had to say yes. I was like, yep, okay, I'm gonna put my big girl pants on, I'm gonna say yes to this, and I'm gonna do the very best that I can. After I'd accepted this opportunity, they sent me through a rough script. Now, me being the very organized person that I am, I had to learn it all back to back, even though they told me not to, I did. <laughs> I, I was so anxious. Anyway, let's get to it. So I went to London. They actually put me up in this glorious hotel. I actually felt really uncomfortable there because it was so fancy. It was five star. It was the poshest place I'd ever been. And there was me. I rocked up in my Primark clothes with a backpack and a Harry Potter handbag on. And it was a real posh. Like the doorman was like, hello, good evening, ma'am. Can I take your bags? And I was just like, no. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, so I rocked up and oh my God, the room was beautiful. It had a standalone bathtub. The view was insane. This girl felt like a princess and it was great. It was great. I won't lie, it was good. So I get ready, I put my shirt on, I do my makeup, I'm freaking out because I'm like, do I look good enough to meet someone as amazing as Warwick Davis? Who knows? Anyway, me and one of my best friends headed down to the studio tour. Upon arriving, I noticed that the studio tour had completely changed. It was huge, it was in a different car park, there was huge buildings that had been suddenly erected everywhere. And I was just like, I don't recognize this place. Anyway, so I got to the front, I was like, hello, I am here to do the tour before the event, before the broadcast. Yes, that's right, there was three things that I was doing this evening. Um, <laughs> and I got there and then I obviously went to the gift shop. If you've not seen my haul yet, go check it out. 
And then I met the lovely interactor who was called Becky. I loved Becky so much. She was my favorite interactor I think I've ever met. And I basically was just ready. I feel I was ready by this point for what the evening was gonna hold. I'd also like to point out, to get to the main bit of the lobby now, you actually have to go on this giant walkway, which the walls are just covered in Marauder's map. And I was just like, wow. This is cool, I'm so confused, but it was good. I got to where I needed to be. So yes, Becky was my guide for the entire evening and I go into the cinema room before you actually start the tour and there was like reserve signs on these seats. I'm just gonna put it out there. I don't feel special enough to have things reserved for me. Just, just stick me in the back or in the corner, it's fine. Anyway, so we sat down in the front row, we watched the film, and then we did the tour. Now, the first thing that I saw in the Great Hall was, of course, the Goblet of Fire. Now, fun fact, the Goblet of Fire that is currently in the Great Hall is not the original. This is actually a resin copy. The original is in a glass case within the main tour. That's the one that's made out of wood and that was intricately carved. It's absolutely stunning. But this one that is mechanical and actually working was in the Great Hall and there is even the little circle around it, the anti-cheating circle I believe it was and there was Fred and George on the floor when they had aged from trying to cheat and yeah it was really cool and they even showed the actual Goblet of Fire throwing out the parchment paper and it was just really cool. So it was really nice to see that in person. Now, of course, I've been to the studio tour many times to the point that I have actually lost count of how many times I've been. I think it's around about 12, but there are always brand new things to see there. And one of the first things that I came across was the Prefect Bathroom Taps. Holy macaroons, it was beautiful. The water was flowing in different colors. They had made bubbles that looked real, though they were made out of, I think, polystyrene or foam. And they looked real, It was. they did a good job. They'd actually put around the water some tubing, clear tubing, because obviously they don't want people splashing the water around. And I'm sure that some visitors would try to do that. But yeah, it was stunning, it was beautiful, it was really big, and it was cool to see in person. I. It was really nice. It's definitely one of my new favourite things that I've seen there. They also had the golden egg. Now they have always had the golden egg from the Goblet of Fire on display but I'm not sure if they've always had one that is opened. Either way, it's relevant to the Goblet of Fire. I saw that and it was beautiful. I really wish that the replicas that Noble Collection do of the Golden Egg opened like that. That's the only reason I don't currently have it because I want the one that opens and it looks beautiful in the middle. So yeah, that was really cool to see. Another thing that, I've, that they've added is the Pensieve in Dumbledore's office. Now, obviously they've had it before but they've never had it out and now they have included this thing that when you look down into it you can see all of the memories it's like this digital screen but it looks really really awesome and magical and it's just another interactive thing that makes it feel really special what else did I see? There was also the port key, the big boot that they used as a port key. That was on display as well near the Quidditch section. And that is a very large boot. I don't know who has feet that big. Maybe it's like a half giant boot, but it definitely wouldn't have fit a normal human being. <laughs> so yeah, we got to see the actual boot, which I think was really cool. They had the Triwizard Cup on display, which I think, if I remember correctly, was in the room with all of the wand boxes that looks like Ollivander's. That was in a case in there. And oh my God, I forgot to tell you about my favorite thing. Um, in the end room where you have Hogwarts and Harry in Winter is playing. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It's the most magical room. This time I didn't cry though, which was quite impressive. No, they've added the Bobaton carriage with all of the flying horses. Are they horses? Are they centaurs? Are they unicorns? I don't know what flies the carriage, I've forgotten. But either way, they have included that in the model of Hogwarts. And oh, it was just, it was beautiful. I wish that they would add more things like that around that model, because it was really cool that they'd added something new to that room, because apart from Hogwarts in the snow, with all the snow on it, it doesn't change too much. And another thing, they have repainted it, so it was looking absolutely beautiful. It was looking the best the Hogwarts could look. Um, so yeah, that was the tour, and I did it again. And yeah, it 
the magic just never wears off. Even though I've been about 12 times, I'm always seeing new things. It's always magical, it's always really special. So that was that part of the evening, which then brings me on to the start of the crazy evening. So after the tour, I went for lunch. I think I got a ham sandwich and a packet of crisps, if you wanted to know, and we sat in the cafe. Now, we didn't just sit anywhere in the cafe where there's picnic benches everywhere. Becky took me to the special corner of the cafe, which I believe is for the deluxe tours, and there's like purple dining tables with bottles of water, fancy cutlery, and there was like purple and gold ropes around it. It was fancy. Did I feel like I belonged there? No. Did I like it? Honestly, no. I felt like a zoo animal. <laughs> Everyone was looking at me like, why does she get to sit in the special purple corner that's magical? Either way, I had a very lovely lunch <laughs> and I'd never seen that part of the cafe before. So moving on, after lunch, um, my lovely friend Emily that runs all of the events uh, at the studio tour said, right, Cherry, it's, um, it's time to go meet Warwick. And I was just like, what? Oh God, I wasn't ready. I'd just eaten a sandwich. I felt like I had ham in my teeth or something. And I was like, oh God, I, I wasn't ready. I genuinely wasn't ready. I get taken backstage where I have been before and there was like these rooms and there was this one green room. I don't know why they call it a green room. They're never green. It was just this office -y type room that had loads of snacks and round tables. And I go in and lo and behold, there is the fabulous Warwick Davis sitting down. And I was just like, ah, what do I do? What do I say? Um, <laughs> I was introduced to Warwick and I was like, hi, I'm Cherry. And I shook his hand. He's so lovely. Warwick Davis is so, so lovely. So we just briefly met and we spoke about that we're doing rehearsals later and then it's gonna be really casual, really chill. We're just gonna get on with it. And we had our scripts out and just had a little browse through those. But it was basically just to meet him then. So I did that and then it was time for the VIP quiz night event. And I met up with some of my friends. I met Tom, Jamie, Joe, uh, Liam, yeah, uh, Sophie, the bakey. She was there as well. And yeah, so I was trying to mingle. I was trying to talk to everybody. And then it was time to go through to the Great Hall. Again, <laughs> twice in one day. Except this time they had kitted this place out. There was beautiful tables with tablecloths which had honeydukes sweets all over them. And before you got to your table, there were these big boards with names on and you had to find your name and find out what team you were on. Because obviously this was a quiz night and we were in teams. So I looked at the board, looked for mine and my best friend's um, name and lo and behold, there it was. We were in a team called Quizners of Azkaban. Did I appreciate the pun? Yes, I did. So I was looking for this name and I was like, I don't know where it is. I don't know which table it is. I was like, none of these tables have my name. My table was at the front. I felt very special. There was loads of lovely ladies on this table. Never met them before, but they were very nice. And we were now a team. And we did the quiz night. Warwick Davis hosted it. He was asking us the questions. And we were there quite a while. Some desserts came out and some little sweet pudding things. It was magical. It was wonderful. I had a very great evening. Now, the quiz ended at around 10 p.m. And I was then very nervous. I'd been nervous all day. I, I had barely eaten anything apart from that ham sandwich all day. It's half 10 at night now. And I was like, okay, this is it. This is around the time that we go to rehearse and then we do the live broadcast. So I then found Becky again and Emily and she takes me through the tour, which is really crazy when it's empty. Like no one's around. I've, I'm like walking through the tour on my own. It's really, really kind of eerie because you can still hear the Harry Potter music and stuff. <laughs> but they obviously turned that off for the broadcast. Now I went to the Gryffindor common room and they're like, right, so you're gonna be sitting there. And I was like, on the Gryffindor common room set? I, I get to go in it, like on it? And they were like, yep. I was like, oh my God. They were like, the seats might be a little bit dusty. I was like, I don't care. I will take all of the dust. Just let me sit inside of it. So there was three chairs. Warwick was gonna be in the middle, Becky to the left of him, and then me to the right of him. They had some props that were bought out. Neville's plant, which was really, really cool. You look, it looks like it's gonna be quite hard, like a, a real cactus, but if you squidge it, and I did squidge it, I squidged it quite a lot, and so did Warwick. We were both kind of squidging Neville's plant, <laughs> which sounds like a euphemism. 
awesome, but it's not. And um, it was really soft, like a sponge. It was really, really cool. And they had like um, an actual daily profit, which had been aged. And yeah, it was so cool. A lot of people have asked me, how was it actually being on the set? It was incredible. I never thought, because you're not allowed on these. There are like bars around it that you're like, if you go on this set, you could be in a lot of trouble. I'm pretty sure you might even have to be insured to go on these sets. I'm not sure because my friend Chris, I don't think he was allowed to go on it, but oh my God, it was beautiful. I felt like this is what it feels like to be in Hogwarts. This is what it feels like. This is where the cast have sit. And I actually looked up pictures of the Gryffindor common room afterwards when I got home from the film. And I was like, there's the chair that I sat on. Uh, yeah, I was geeking out. It was really cool. There was me next to Professor Flitwick just chilling in the Gryffindor common room. And he made a joke saying, I shouldn't be allowed in here because I'm Ravenclaw. And I was just like, that's true. And yeah, we had a little chat. I spoke to him about his documentary with Bear Grylls because I'd recently watched that. I was like, that is so cool. I was trying my very best not to fangirl. I feel like I kept it together. I really hope that Warwick isn't watching this video because all of that keeping it together was for nothing. <laughs> but no, he was great. Um, and we did the broadcast, well, we did the rehearsal, which went brilliantly. I kind of wished that that was the broadcast because then I had to do it all over again. We had little cue cards. Thank Merlin's beard for the cue cards. I would have been so lost without them. So lost without them. But yeah, we did the quiz. The live broadcast happens over on the Warner Brothers Studio Tour Facebook page. It's definitely there to watch if you would still like to watch it. And yeah, I we did it and it was really good and I was really happy with how it went and, and afterwards I was like, it's been a pleasure to meet you Warwick and shook his hand again and then I got the kind of lady balls to say, hi, can actually can I have a photograph with you? And we actually posed with the Daily Prophet and yeah, we it was really cool and we just had some nice photos together and then that was that and then Emily was like, being so nice to me and she gave me that Mina Lima print which you would have seen in my haul and she also gave me the little Goblet of Fire parchment names and I was euphoric after a whole day of being really nervous and anxious to the point that I felt really sick um, I was really proud I was so proud of myself that I went outside of my comfort zone out of my little box and I did something that I never thought that I would be good enough to do, but I did it. And by this time of the night, it was 11 p.m. I was at the tour at 11 p.m. And then I went back to the hotel and I couldn't sleep for ages because I was just so, I couldn't stop smiling, my face hurt. And if it, ah, uh, it still feels surreal. I don't understand how I can, do stuff like that or be asked to be do stuff like that because I just feel like I'm Cherry, I'm from Birmingham and yeah I've got a YouTube channel but I just feel like everyone else <laughs> and yeah to be asked to do that kind of thing what an honor so thank you so much to Emily, Becky, Warwick, the studio tour just thank you for one of the best days of this year in fact it was the best day of this year so far and yeah, so just thank you. So that is my story time. That is that is how everything happened. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Yeah, <laughs> just type comments at me. I love reading them. I love replying to them. If you have any questions whatsoever about the Goblet of Fire features or my time with Warwick, please do leave a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I have no idea how long this video has been. If it's been really super long, I am sorry. Or you're welcome if you like long videos, but I'm gonna go now. I will be back very soon with a brand new video and thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.